Scottish time when to leave. Their amendment is at the beckoning of Europeans. So we have actually a very clear choice, and I, I would willingly take those interruptions that are trying to trip me up uh, in making this short contribution. So the first thing is I fought as much as I could the referendum campaign being a reluctant Brexiteer. And that was on balance. Balance. I'm gonna, I said I will give way to the Honourable Lady as soon as I've finished explaining this and the three clauses attached to it, is that we need a safe haven. Uh, talking of a safe haven, I let my, I do my <laughs> I have my right Honourable Friend to give him way. Will he not concede, however, that an arbitrary date for Brexit could risk damaging the British economy if the clear evidence emerges, as it already is, that yeah. hurrying Brexit may indeed badly damage our manufacturing sector, our agricultural sector and our financial services? Yeah. 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 Um, I am supported by people who uh, largely whose constituents agree with me and not their views. Um, and uh, how they deal with that is not my problem. I agree it's a difficult problem. It doesn't mean to say that one should have any particular solution to it. But Labour voters, uh, the, the, larger, the larger the majority, generally speaking, the more clear they spoke about Brexit. But I am... No, no. But absolutely. But, but to my... To my honourable friend, I will actually be dealing um, with the point in a it moment. It actually comes down to who do we think we're dealing with? Yeah. Are we playing a game of cricket or have we got people Not who yet. are trying who are yet. I'm just saying that. I'm saying that. You some people suggest we are I'm saying that we will be fighting for our lives. And why we want this clause, if I ever get on to Fully explaining it, I will um, actually say so. Now, I think my honourable friend there wanted to intervene. I, 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 was, I was confused by his suggestion that, um, that all Labour voters are somehow supporting his position, because actually the majority of them didn't. Um, and the majority of Labour members don't support his position either. I think that's very important to take. And would he correct the record? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I happily add to the record because it makes some people's circumstances more difficult. I said, generally speaking, the larger the Labour majority in a general election, the bigger the turnout, the bigger the last objection, and the one before that, and the one before that, you want to do it, the more the more likely they were to vote leaving. And one can consult one can consult, one can consult that, 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 before I, before I give, before I give, before I give. Oh, 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 oh. Can we have? We don't need everybody stood up at the same time. I'm sure if the right honourable gentleman is going to give way, which he's already done, he will say so. But please don't keep all standing up at the same time, Frank Field. And I was also before I give way, and before, and before I. Includes Mr. Farrelly as well, who's already had a good start to the day. Let's not continue in the same way, Frank Field. <laughs> and as I would say in qualifying that general statement, the, the area that I love to represent, not my own constituency, but others, actually voted to remain and were against the trend of what was in the country about Labour support and a, um, the referendum. I will give way to my, no, I give way to my friend who's been in the House. Mr Speaker, I only have four short sheets of paper. Uh, it's, taken, it's taken all this time. I do actually have an answer for that. But any politician, and, but, but, and, but, any, but well, no, indeed, it seems to me it's the Labour side that needs actually educating, as I would say it, to where Labour voters are. Uh, 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 I'm grateful to uh, my right honourable friend. Uh, did my right honourable friend receive uh, a pamphlet from the government during the referendum, uh, paid for by, uh, by, by the taxpayers, which on the back said uh, that uh, the government would carry out the wishes of the people uh, via the vote in the referendum? And doesn't he believe that actually having a fixed date known by everybody actually delivers what the people voted for? Yeah. I have to confess, 
in receiving the pamphlet but throwing it away <laughs> in the bin <laughs> immediately to my own riverside. <laughs> and I, I thank my right honourable friend for giving way. I note he did qualify his earlier statement, but would he accept that at the last general election, over 85% of Liverpool Riverside constituents voted for the Labour Party candidate, and that 73% of Liverpool Riverside electors voted to remain. Does he accept that the people of Liverpool Riverside have great wisdom, and that ought to be followed? <laughs> if I did, it would mean that the voters of Birkenhead didn't have wisdom, which is the very opposite point that she's making. So I'm not going to put my head in that news. Now, I've given way, to, I've given way once that there is now I'm going to, in a moment, say this clause begins, I think, a new neg negotiating hand. I think we need a bre Brexit cabinet, small, with the offer to the opposition to be on it, as in wartime, which Mr Ackley, Mr Greenwood it, were accepted, that we actually try to uh, have a national interest. Yes, you may laugh. I mean, if that's... It, it's, yes, well, well, I mean... Uh, um, the, 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 um, no, no, I'm not. I, no, I will in a moment. I mean, clearly this is proving shocking to this side, but it will also tell. It will. It will be. No, it will be a test of whether we're intent on the best possible terms, uh, whether we have a clear position or not, and whether we're putting our country first. I give way. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank. My right honourable friend and neighbour for giving way. Can I ask him if he agrees with me that the reason why we ought to have such cross party cooperation is because this issue is not funny or a joke, it's about the future of our country. And that's why we should listen to everyone in this House, not just the narrow interests of the Tory party. Yeah. Uh, we should, we should, my honourable friend, I think she ended her sentence rather early, that we should try and be difficult as it is to put aside partial affections and concentrate on the national issue. That's why I do believe... No, I mean, literally, I can hardly issue a sentence. I'm not... For, to, the, to those who I've given way, Mr Lindsay, I'm not going to give way until much later, much, much later. The second reason why I feel disappointment with the government's stance is that I feel they misread the other side with whom we are negotiating. Uh, a British assumption is always give and take. What we have now is the Barnier rule of all take and no give. And I will actually comment on how I think we should respond to that in a moment. Anybody who was serious, as all of us have been in this House, about wishing to award um, uh, equal status and citizenship to EU citizens in, in this country, no, those negotiations could have been over in half an hour. There was never, ever, ever, ever the intention of the other side um, ticking that off, saying that's very good, there's millions of people's lives have been put at e ease about that fact, both Britons living in uh, the European Union and European citizens as they will become living um, in Britain. And I think we ought to um, very, very carefully consider that from our negotiations well, would the now. Would the right honourable gentleman accept that uh, the House of Lords is, of course, unelected? Uh, it has actually also passed the Referendum Act itself by its own decision, and it really has no justification whatsoever for attempting to obstruct, delay or to undermine this bill. Uh, a very, very, very important lesson uh, needs to go to some of those in the House of Lords who think they can wreck this bill and wear us down so that Brexit never takes place. There's a very important convention, the Salisbury Convention, and there's a very important difference between a referendum and a party's manifesto. Uh, the Salisbury um, Convention allows us to give and take over the important parts of a manifesto, um, which governments rightly feel committed to, 
and through, so that, through which they wish to pursue in Parliament and stand for re-election on saying we've done the job we've promised to do. We are in a different ball game, and I, 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 at the beginning I tried to say it is difficult for us all to get to terms with being the role that we have as MPs and the role that we have in a post-referendum debate. And I think their Lordship should know that if they try and wreck this bill, then many of us will push the nuclear button. Our side of the House wants to see the House of Lords go. I'm surprised there wasn't a cheer uh, at, at, at this point. I, I, uh, that it will be, they will sound, they will sound their own no, death wrong to think all of the 17 billion a year would be coming back to us. There is already coming back to us the, fifth, uh, the five billion that Mrs. Thatcher negotiated from the unfair formula. Watered down by whom I won't say, but, but, but there's only so much one can say from these benches. Uh, water, 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 water down, nevertheless, it's five billion coming back, and there is four billion coming back to promote anti-poverty programs in this country. I wish to tell the House I applied for money from these funds to feed people who may, are hungry, may be starving. And what did Mr Barnier and his group, uh, group do? Nothing. So we have supposedly huge sums of money coming back at their direction, what it should be spent on, but actually doesn't feed people who are hungry. The first and civilised intervention I had about timing, um, about um, maybe it's a fallacy to think in one's own terms and have terms for the nation. But do you know I've never bought a house without having in the contract the date when it's mine, when I can actually, actually get in. Um, I've never actually, apart from being elected to the House of Commons, but, 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 knowing, but knowing that I would actually have a far up to five year contract, I've never had a job that doesn't have a starting date in it. And therefore I do... Yes, I do. Of course I will. I'm, I'm very grateful to my right honourable friend for giving way. I think his analogy about buying a house falls down at the first hurdle, because yeah, nobody yeah, commits to a date to buy a house before they know what it is that they're buying. <laughs> <laughs> but secondly, and the substantive point is this, is not the fatal weakness of what he proposes, and I respect the way in which he argues his case, as he always does, this, that the Secretary of State said to us when he came to appear before the Select Committee, that it is possible that the negotiations may go to the 59th minute of the 11th hour, and that is undoubtedly possible. In those circumstances, does it really make sense to bind the hands of the country and those who are negotiating on behalf of the country to get the best possible deal we can get, which is also the weakness of the government's own amendment? Does it make sense to do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. As the, um, my honourable friend, right honourable friend, was um, kind to me about the house analogy. Um, <laughs> I've always bought my houses and uh, never inherited them. Um, and, I didn't. I bought mine too. Very good. Be very, very good. I, 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 I respect you look over our whole history in Europe. The idea that we finish any negotiations other than at the very last minute is almost unheard of. Um, and this will actually, by putting the time in, uh, it will say you have to begin your sh shenanigans a month before that rather than the month after. Um, because I know he's concluding. I just wanted to make this simple point. This whole argument about having flexibility falls when you look at Article 50 itself. It was very specific for a very simple reason. And that is that in that timescale, it is therefore 
determinant on those who are negotiating to reach an agreement or agree not to reach an agreement. Just changing that timescale doesn't allow you to reach an agreement. They have the time to do it. And that is the whole point about compression, to get an agreement. That's why the date's in Article 50. Yeah, yeah. Last point, Mr uh, Hoyle. Uh, I thought my amendment was merely implementing the uh, Section 50, which we all voted for, to tell our constituents that we've had, that, well, apart from, apart from one who voted against, um, well, voted, voted against, oh, voted against, uh, triggering Article 50. Very, very good. Well, very good. Apart from two or three, very, very, apart from four, four, any more on four, four, five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 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 nine I mean, I'm, Mr. Mr. Hoyle, I thought I would take, it was so uncontentious what I was saying, I thought this would have been five minutes. Uh, I apologise to the House for the time that I've taken. All this clause, new clause does is to put on the statute book the actual timing of clause, section 50 that we voted for in overwhelming numbers almost a year ago. And I moved the clause in my name and in those names that still remain on the order paper.